So a lot of what I've been doing here comes down to lights and how do I trigger lights on in the right place at the right time. So good example because now we're approaching sunset and if I look at my stairs down there, the stairs kind of dark. Not so bad now, but if one of us or the kids get up in the middle of the night and want to come down the stairs, well, you kind of want to be able to see before you go downstairs. So up here, where are we? Just up there. If you look at the video, there is a little Ikera Zigbee light and motion sensor. So what's going to happen is as I walk past that and it can see me, the lights down here on the stairs should come on. So as we go over here, duh, 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 and then as we come around here, by the time we get there, we have nice lighting on the stairs. There's one there, so that if I come out of my master bedroom and go through there, it works just fine. And then there's another one right down at the bottom of the stairs. So if you come back the other way, like we've been up late at night or something like that watching TV, and then you come upstairs, it's good. But there's another one just in this area here, because within here is where you get to the kids' rooms. Now, if the kids come out at night, I want them to come out onto like this mezzanine middle floor level here and actually have stuff work. So there's one there that will trigger the lights on the stairs and incidentally these will go off after a period of inactivity as well. So remember these motion sensors are like turn on when someone moves but also turn off if no one is moving after a period of time. Anyway, the one just here is also going to turn on the down lights which we see up here on the roof. So as I come into this area, everything here lights up as well. And this is the same deal, so this will turn off after a period of inactivity. There's one difference though, with the stairs down there, I only want to light this stuff up if there's not enough light. So I'm looking at how much light is going into the sensor all the way down the bottom just there, and if there's not enough light, that will turn the lights on. But if we come in here and it's like broad daylight flooding through the windows and it's super, super bright, the stairs just simply won't turn on. Here, however, is always kind of dark, so there's no condition around light levels for these ones to turn off. Now, here's where it gets really fun, <laughs> once we get to kids' rooms. And I did get a little bit carried away. So there is a light sensor just up here, light sensor motion sensor, just on the other side of the door. And as I go into my son's room, the whole place neons up like a nightclub. So as we go in here, everything will start to turn on. And he has downlights. In fact, there's four downlights on the roof just here, and then you can see there's some downlights here above his Terminator and Predator things. So they all come on at the same time. And then because it's Christmas, his Christmas tree comes on too, and because he's a boy who likes neon, he's got neon. Now the Nerf gun wall of much fame, that's here as well. So that goes on at the same time, so that's got LEDs behind them, and his bookshelves have got LEDs behind them, and his bed's got LEDs under it, and the bookshelves, and the bookshelves, side tables, everything's got LEDs under it. So, all of these can be triggered on, based on motion. Now, they can also be turned off, because one thing about kids is that they never turn their freaking lights off. So I wanted to make sure that the lights would go off if there's no activity. However, both turning stuff on and turning stuff off is not something I want to do during the hours that they might be sleeping because maybe the little guy wants his lights on. Fair enough, I don't want to turn them on just because he's lying there motionless. Likewise, if he wants them off and he moves around a bit in bed, I don't want the thing suddenly lighting up. Now the other thing is because kids want to be able to control the stuff themselves but I don't really want him sitting here with the device the whole time, this is where she whose name I cannot speak yet, comes into play. So he has one in his room, and my daughter has one in her room, and they can both speak and ask for things to change. So for example, if popular want to be, where's our Nerf gun wall over here? All right. Alexa, make Ari's Nerf gun wall blue. Okay. Ooh, there we go. And then we go over here. And he loves this because he can muck around with it. Alexa, Make Ari's bookshelves green. Okay. How's that? That's cool. And then of course we do the same thing in my daughter's room. So as we go into her room, which is dark, 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 until we get to the motion sensor 
just up here. Now they're up here on the inside of the door, so they don't get people out here, but they do get you when you go in. And then suddenly we come in and just like his room, her room lights up. And in the same way as we can ask his Amazon Echo, won't say the lady's name at the moment, <laughs> to, uh, to turn certain things on or make them certain colors, we can also do the same thing here. So for example, she often doesn't like all these lights on. Alexa, turn off the lights in Elle's room. And everything goes dark. Okay. Thank you, Alexa. And she does still have a traditional light switch, which is on the wall just down here. And that has got a Shelly behind it. So what we can do with the Shelly is make it a detached switch so that when you toggle the light switch, it won't actually kill the power to the lights, but rather that can raise an event in Home Assistant. And then in Home Assistant, I can say, hey, digitally talk to each one of the four lights that are on her roof and then turn them off. Don't kill the power to them, but turn them off. And then I can turn them back on again based on a motion event or based on someone flicking the detach switch back to the on position. So best of all worlds, that is lighting.